I'm Sean Lee with Daystar Filters, and today we're going to be discussing the Solar Ready Telescope from Daystar. And here I have one, just as it comes in a box. You'll receive it just like this. Now, to open this box, you simply set it down on the side like this and pull up on the sheet, like so. And once you get it about halfway, you can just pull up like this, but be sure not to lift it too high and drop the scope. Okay, I've got the box open. I just used a small knife. Don't use anything big. And first thing we do is you'll see the directions on top. Um, you want to read those directions along with this video. And we have our top foam. Take that out. And let me pull the scope out. You can see that it comes in a large Ziploc bag. Pull the scope out of that. I just grabbed by the collar here and remove the plastic bag. Save that, you'll want to use that when you're not using the scope for storage. Okay. Now, I'm going to set the scope down for a second. And we'll pull out the small white box with the power converters. It has power converters for every country in it here. And then the actual power pack. Now, the Daystar filter or the Daystar Solar Ready, like this is, requires power to work. So you'll see this uh, here. This is where the plug will plug into. Okay, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, now that you've unpacked the Daystar uh, Solar Scope, you have you notice you'll have two feet on the bottom. You have this uh, standard foot that comes with it, and that's fine for normal tripods, um, but the this extended foot here, this is an option you can buy from Daystar Filters, and I highly recommend this if you get a solar a scope like this Ioptron, or the mount like this Ioptron, or any mount that requires a sliding plate. The other advantage to having this plate is you have more room to balance with, because balance is really important on the scope, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Alright, so let's see if we can actually mount this to the tripod. Normally I would use the Ioptron because as the sun as the earth rotates the sun moves to your field and this actually will track with the GPS up top. Alright, I'm going to slide it into the mount here. Okay. Now right now this is going to be a little front heavy because I haven't placed the rest of the gear on the back, the diagonal and the eyepiece and that, that kind of thing. But once you've placed everything on here, then you want to balance it. You want to let it go. See, right now it's front heavy, but it should be more evenly balanced once you have every, all the gear on the back. And then you can just slide this back and forth until you find the place where it balances and then simply tighten up the nut here. Okay. And you can tighten this guy up to engage the, the actual drive mount. Now the nice thing about the Ioptron is that the earth rotates so the sun will appear to drift through your field where the Ioptron with its GPS will automatically track the sky, track the sun, um, so you can keep the solar image in view. Yeah, so if you have more than one person, you know, tracking is ideal. Um, for every person that comes up to the, to the scope, you have to you know, adjust it. That becomes uh, kind of a pain. So a tracking mount like this is ideal for solar observing. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to use the tripod because it's just simpler to, to film. Um, and then we'll come back to this when we go outside and actually try to use the scope. All right, now this tripod comes with a, a slide-off foot, as most tripods do these days. Uh, that can be simply screwed into the existing uh, foot that the scope comes with, or the extra option bar that we have here. All right, I used a coin to attach this, this particular one, although your tripod may be different. Now, I place this on the tripod. You can, it's up to you whether you personally choose to have the bar in the back, or the handbar up front. You can also use the handbar as another bean, means of balance if you need a little more weight up front, a little more weight at back. You know, changing this to the front or back can help with that problem. Now let's place this on here. All right, so I've uh, got the bar on now. I slide it in, and on this particular tripod, I tighten that foot up. Okay. So now we have the Daystar mounted on the tripod, but as you can see, it's not balanced. It wants to go forward. Now, the first thing you might think of is actually just to tighten it up. 
but that will eventually wear out your tripod, so it's not a good idea. It's always a good idea that with any telescope to balance it as good as you can. So first let's get all the other gear and place that on the back. Okay, that'll be our next step. All right, now that we've got the uh, scope on the tripod, I wanted you to notice that these two little knobs underneath here, okay, this here, this, this knob is simply a break. Okay, when you tighten it up, it keeps the draw tube from moving on its own. The other knob is a lock. If you tighten that up, when you turn the knobs, oops, let me tighten it up a little more. Now when I turn the knob, nothing happens. Okay. So this, it's a good thing if you're you know, showing the public and you don't want anybody to touch the focus or change anything, you can actually lock that up. Or if you're trying to do uh, photography and you've got uh, the focus set. So most of the time I don't actually use that, but I just want to let you know what that was for. Okay, so you want to leave that loose for most applications. Now this one here is your brake. Okay? You should have this balanced enough that you don't need that brake, but uh, if you do, you can tighten it here. But don't over tighten. If you over tighten this knob, uh, you can actually cause harm to the telescope. So tighten it, you know, finger tight. <laughs> don't use any kind of wrench or anything on that. And uh, you know, don't try and use your strength to tighten it all the way down. Okay. Now, I like to set it so that I have a little resistance when I turn the knob, but I don't have to uh, you know, put a lot of effort into turning the knob. Okay, the next step, we're going to replace the accessory gear on the back. And the first thing I need to do is remove the 2 inch to inch and a quarter adapter because I'm going to be placing a 2 inch diagonal on the back. And you'll notice that if you remove this, plug here, you'll see a brass insert inside. And that brass insert is a compression ring. So that'll squeeze down in your eyepieces and keep them snug. But it won't scratch your eyepieces. Now the, inside the 2 inch ring here, there's also a compression ring. So, now, let me uh, grab a 2 inch diagonal. And we'll put this on the back of the scope. Okay, and tighten it down. And I just budge it a little bit, try and move it, and it seems tight. Okay. You don't want your eyepieces or your diagonal falling off the back when you aim up, so make sure that it's fairly tight. Okay. Now, uh, let's put an eyepiece on this. And I do recommend uh, Teleview eyepieces. They seem to have the best contrast, and since we're using a scope during the daytime, there's a lot of stray light, so we really need high contrast, and we need eyepieces that won't let light bounce around inside and the edges of the inside of the plossel, the Teleview plossel, are ideal for this application. Uh, we've tried other plossels and they don't have the, the contrast. So in this case I'm using a 32 millimeter plossel. I don't recommend anything smaller than a 26 millimeter on this scope. Okay, so if you want to use a 32 or a 40, those are ideal for this telescope. Okay. And you can see on this, in this case I'm using a just an inch and a quarter eyepiece. So on the diagonal I'm using the 2 inch, 2 inch and a quarter adapter. Um, if you wanted to use a 2 inch eyepiece, you can also do that. But what I recommend are the 32 and the 40 millimeter uh, Teleview plossels. Okay. You'll notice on top of the solar ready, you'll see this little guy here. This is called a soul searcher. This is how you find the sun. Finding the sun, although it looks easy to find to your eye, is actually a difficult thing to find. It's only a half a degree of field in the sky. So it's about your pinky at arm's length. It doesn't seem that small, but it is. So to solve that, we have this guy here that lets the sun in through the front, through this little hole, and projects the sunlight onto this back disc. Okay. This makes it very easy to align to, to the sun. And you just aim the scope up in the air until you see the sun's disc come onto that white disc. And the sun will be right in the scope. Another method is to align by the shadow. And how you do that is if you have the scope aimed too high, then, like so, if you have it aimed too high, you'll see an elongated scope on the ground. If you have it too low, you'll also have an elongated scope. But if you're right on the sun, you'll make the minimum size shadow. Okay? And because this tube is round, the shadow should be about round with a little bit of eyepiece sticking up. Now, finding it that way is it's easy on low power, but because this telescope is naturally on high power, it make, it's a little difficult to do it that way. So that's why we provide this soul searcher um, with this scope. Alright, our next step is to actually power the unit. And uh, you've got your universal adapter here. 
And then I've got, since we're in the United States, I've got my US adapter here. Now I just place the, the adapter inside like so, and it will snap into place. Okay? And now you're set to plug it in. So let's do that. All right, I've uh, plugged in the other end into the power, and I'll place this one in to the scope, and you'll see the yellow light turn on. Okay? That means the element is now heating. Now there's a knob here, and this is for red shifting or blue shifting the spectrum. So if you want to look at a particular feature on the sun, or the, <clears throat> the wavelengths have been changed slightly because of the atmosphere, because of the sun's rotation, there's, there's a lot of factors that make the, uh, the wavelength shift just slightly. Okay? And this is an adjustment to adjust for that. Now you'll feel, when you turn this knob, you'll feel a little divot. Okay? And that is the original set point. Okay? So you want to leave it there to start with. And when you look at the sun, if you see that you're not getting the optimal image, you can adjust this one way or the other. Okay? Just, it'll take a little experimentation. Now, this light will start out a yellow like this. And when it comes up to temperature, that light will turn green. Okay? So we'll wait for that. Okay, now that the light has turned green, that means uh, we're on band. That is where we've set the selector, it is now at that temperature. Now what you'll notice is if you change the selector, it will turn back to yellow. That means it has to change the temperature up or down to meet the, the new selection. Okay. Um, if you're watching, you'll be able to see that it'll just kind of come into view. Okay. So, it, And you also won't see this just click on instant green. It will slowly turn green when it comes, into, uh, comes up to temperature. Okay, that's it for the initial setup here. Now we'll take it outside and I'll actually go through the actual usage of the scope what to do, what not to do, well, what to expect. Um, all right, so follow me out there. Okay, now that we've come outside, we're here on the deck, uh, we're gonna set up the Ioptron mount. And the first thing you wanna do is set the tripod down and try to level it. There's a bubble level on the side here. And then on the other side, you'll see a S for south, and you wanna point that part of the mount to the south. Okay. All right, here's the bubble level. You want the bubble inside of the ring for it to be level. To adjust that, you can adjust the three tripod legs and just by, I'm gonna tilt it here. By tilting it, you can see the bubble moves. Okay. So just put that bubble in the center of the circle and you'll be good. The next thing you wanna do, or actually the first thing you probably wanna do is name this south, because um, the ground you're sitting on might not be level. Okay, all right, our next uh, step is to put the scope on. So now I've got the scope. Slide it in on the mount here the bar, tighten this down, and then I'm going to let it go a little, see how, well, I have to loosen this over here to have it be free, and I can see it's a little back heavy, so I'm going to move it forward a little, tighten it down, still back heavy, front, there, okay, once you get it balanced, should be able to just leave it alone. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Okay, there. So now I've got it balanced. So that way the motor in the Ioptron doesn't have to work very much to move the mount. And that will save the life of your Ioptron as the gears won't wear as much. Alright, now let's remove the lens cap and uh, let's tighten the deck motor, this knob on the side over here. Okay, now that we've got the scope attached, we want to set up the mount and find the sun. So on the Ioptron, before you turn it on, you want to aim the telescope straight up and down, and you want to make sure this is pointed south. Okay, then, then I uh, turn it on, and I grab my hand controller here. It'll take a few seconds to find uh, the GPS coordinates where we are. Okay, it looks like it's good. Now I hit uh, menu and say select and slew, just click enter. Okay. And the first thing will come up is planet, sun, moon. And since we're looking for the sun, let's click on that. And scroll up, it should be sitting on Mercury to start with. But let's scroll up and find the sun. Okay. So it took two clicks to get to the sun, I hit enter. And it says warning, warning, you know, looking at the sun can damage your eyes. And that is true for a normal telescope, but since this is a hydrogen alpha telescope designed to look at the sun, that's okay. 
So he says, are you sure? And we say, yes, enter. Okay. Now the scope will slew and find the sun. The nice thing about this is once it finds the sun, it will track automatically. Okay. Now, since we're, we didn't align this perfectly south, okay, and it's not perfectly level, all that kind of thing, it's not going to be exactly on the sun, but it's close enough to track well. All right, so now, the next step is to actually find the sun and get it in the eyepiece. Okay. Okay. So, as you can see, here's the soul searcher that we talked about earlier. The sun goes in through this hole and projects there on the back uh, plane. All right, so you can see it's off a little bit. So let's uh, use the hand controller to steer the scope so that the sun goes into the middle of the soul searcher. Okay, there you go. Now the sun should be in the center of the eyepiece. Take a look here. And indeed it is. Okay, now that we've set up the mount and the, we have the scope tracking, let's actually plug in the hydrogen alpha. It's, I don't recommend doing that first because as you're setting up, you know, cords can get twisted around mounts and that kind of thing. So make sure everything's set up first, then plug in it in. Uh, and it'll take uh, seven or eight minutes to warm up. So go get a drink or something while you wait for that to happen. All right, now I'm gonna take a look in here and I see a big red blur. That just means it's out of focus. So take your focus knob here. This is your coarse adjustment fo focus and the black knob on the bottom here, that's your fine adjustment. Okay, so you wanna use your coarse adjustment to make the sun into a nice crisp disc. Okay. So I'm gonna turn that until I find it. And you may have to run up, up and down this scale. It depends on your setup. All right, so there I've found focus and I see a few nice sunspots. Okay, and I'm already seeing some prominences. All right, now if I want fine focus, again, I can just use the black knob here. So if I want to focus on a certain prominence or a certain feature, you can use that black knob to make really fine tune, tune uh, adjustments. And um, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, you can email us at Daystar Filters. My, my name is Sean, and my email address is sean at daystarfilters.com. Thank you. Have a good day.